So we are here for the but the NCAA softball scores here for what for when for Thursday. May 9th, 2024 we got eleven here. We got and we're gonna do some games here as well, some look around as well. We got Wofford and Samford to be on the bottom of the night. Number six UCA, top of the seventh six nothing. It was number six UCA, it's gonna be Arizona State. But not a run row though. And we got Portland State, six four and Idaho State in the bottom of six in the big sky. Tennessee Tech eight six and Southern Uni in the bottom of the fourth. Georgia Tech two one over number fifteen Virginia Tech in the top of the fifth. We got Missouri State four two on Belmont in the top of the fifth. Incarnate Word six two and McNeese in the Southland side in the elimination game. Loser is going out of the tournament. Winner of this we need to win the two. We need to win the championship game, the first championship game, and the if necessary championship game. Charleston Southern won nothing on S South Carolina State in the bottom of the fourth in the Big South. UTEP and Liberty five four in that one in the bottom of the second and yet in the Carmen State turn. Alabama State four nothing on Bethune in the bottom of the third. Boy State seven one on San Diego State in the top of the third. Baylor won nothing on UCF in the bottom of the third. We got Rain Delay in the Sun Belt. We got Missouri number twelve Great Missouri up. Oh. One nothing on Arkansas in the SC course in the top uh, in the bottom of the first. Wisconsin one nothing on Rutgers in the top of the first. North Carolina and Central Coast score in the top of the first. And some other games have ended since last time. Mention them. We have California Baptist beat Southern Utah four and Erie did beat number. Arizona State six nothing. Arizona and Washington. That's gonna start up at nine Eastern, ten early. Six Pacific. Or not nine ten Eastern, seven Pacific. I bet I said nine Eastern, like nine Central my day. Or ten Eastern, seven Pacific. Most well, Ohio ten early is at nine thirty Eastern. I mean, where is the game? Where is the ten? Where's the score of that one? Probably up here. Um, yes, number 24, Mamahoe, came back to win at 5 4. They're, they're down 4 0. And then we have Matt Chart at 30 game of the day. I was telling we scored for 10 Eastern. And we moved obviously back to like probably like midnight, close to like midnight Eastern. To midnight Eastern at the earliest, actually. And he turns to tell you at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. In the center at 10 30 Eastern. 10 30, 10 30 p.m. local time is as well. <laughs> and uh, off it's same for the top of the ten, You've got to make sure that you've got speed on the bases. And and here's the other part of this, too. Wofford, apart from that fourth inning, they weren't really showing much signs of having much going at all no. offensively. You've yeah. got it now. And, yeah. and so it's uh, this is a welcome sight for Wofford. We, okay, we start this inning with a runner and score. This is great. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And again, Sanford will have that in the bottom half of their inning. Terrier's got to get it in first. Oh, it looks like she went around. They're going to check. Oh, they say she did not. Looked like from our vantage point, Parker broke the wrists. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to go with, with Newcomb on that one. <laughs> I 100% think that she went. I still think that she went. You know, look, well, okay. All I, right, I looking do. at that, it looked a little bit closer than. But I than, saw that wrist movement. I, I got if you, you. If you show me the wrist. <laughs> Spoken like a true pitcher. Yeah, <laughs> show me the wrist. I'm going to say you went. Parker's worked it back to two. Terriers settle for 
Any old type of run. Good battle by Parker. Yeah, and I mean, this is a big situation for Parker, the freshman who's 0 for 3 on the day. Hasn't gotten a hit yet. She could come up really big right here. Yeah. Got it to the left side. They check on the runner and two outs here in the third. That was a smart play by Bruce. You've got to check on the runner at third. Thought maybe Butler may send her still yeah, just to too. make a, you know make the defense work. It's a gamble, but yeah, I did too. I, I thought that she might send her and try to force them to make that throw. But I mean now you have Engel stepping up to the plate who has home run potential. We've seen her do it in this tournament. That's it to the right side. And that's going to be the inning. Sanford is going to start the bottom of the 10th. And now it'll be 10. And we got Portland State. I got State. 6 5 top of the summit. Cover a lot of ground in that outfield. So here comes Johansson, popped out in the first, grounded out in the third, had an RBI bunt single in the fifth inning. And depending on how this game ends, that runner who stopped at third from Portland State, when the coach was waving her in to try and force a play at the plate, could prove to be the difference. First pitch is a ball. Off-speed pitch on the outside part of the plate for a strike. Home plate is now basically in shadows here at Miller Ranch. Foul the way. Strike two for Idaho State in the last of the seventh. Sethman, unless there's a pinch hitter, Gracie Smith and Alyssa Yee, 9, 1, and 2 in the batting order. In the air to left field, playable, easy. Smith, two outs. As we say in the trade, a can of corn. Don't ask me why, but that's what they say. I've always wondered on that one. So you might have Honestly, I, I, <laughs> I don't know the, the reason to that, but that is what they say on an easy fly ball. Here comes Lorraine Allo, had the home run off Yee's glove that bounced over the fence in the first, singled in the third, grounded out in the fifth. She's two for three. Time. out was her last at bat the entire tournament it was a swinging bunt right in front of the catcher that the home plate umpire ruled foul but I guess got overruled by the field umpires mm -hmm. yep catcher to first something with the wristband the technology the uh, apparently that was on the blink as far as getting the signs from the dugout for ISU the pitching coach, according to Andy, gives the pitch that they want. It's relayed through, and I don't know if they're Apple Watches, but all of the players have something like that device. And apparently something was going on with the catcher's device. They had to switch it out. Pitch is low. Ball one. Two outs here in the seventh. Portland State up one run, six to five. Just off the plate, ball two. Another one going right down to the end, the cardiac kids for Idaho State. Two zero pitch. There's a drive, left center field, back to the track, it's off the wall. 
Smith recovers, gets it in play. It's a double for Allo, and that one almost went out. That double sponsored by Jeremiah Johnson Brewery, the official beer of the Big Sky Conference, do well. Here's the replay. Off the bat, I thought this one was leaving. I don't think she got quite all of it, but she got a, she got a good piece of it. Beautiful swing. And Smith again quickly recovers. Smith and Brown in left and center can really cover a lot of ground for ISU. And I think we've got a pinch runner. Double zero pinch running for Portland State. Double zero, that would be Smith. Nevaeh Smith, pinch running. She pinch ran yesterday as well. So here's Natalie Martinez, grounded out in the first, hit into a fielder's choice in the third, had her home run robbed by Yee, and it turned into a double play in the fifth inning. So she is 0 for 3. First pitch, strike. Change up, strike two. No balls, two strikes, two outs, seventh inning. What? No. Ball inside on a fast. I'm not really cool, but. Starting to plowed up a little bit in left and center field. Right field still blue skies. Swing and a miss on a changeup, and that ends the inning for Portland State. No run. And that's the end of the inning. So we got now we got Southern Indian in Tennessee Tech here. There's some power sending it. And over the wall. So Kennedy Hart gets the start and hits the dinger. So Eight five here. Here took two one and Virginia took the ball. It doesn't matter Four, that she two, has about a third of the amount of at bats that the rest two, of the starters have in this Florida State lineup. She gets a pitch that is left big and look at the spin. It's so curves. Little backspin on that changeup coming in and you took on number up on the bring and then it goes into center field. Winchell chases and it hits the ball. Taylor Harding with the solo home run doubles the lead for Florida State. I think Harding was tired of us talking about home runs for the nightcap between Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech. She blasts her 13th home run of the year. She is already in double digits, beating last year's home run number. Not only is she picked up her power, but she is sitting with the best batting average of her career. She has seen the ball so well. For a 4 3 and 10. We have Ball State Menu for Ohio. It was 10 of 3 for 8 30 Eastern. I'm going to get it away any minute here. Here at number 19, there's one at N number Washington at 7 Pacific 10 Eastern. So uh, let's go to back to the big sky. Okay. Had a pinch double. She was down to her last strike, which tied the game. They actually had to suspend the game because the Cardinals were tied to one in 10 innings. The next day, Navarrete had a big pinch hit. Trying to lead off the seventh and do the same thing, and that first pitch is a strike. Grace Kimball out there for another inning. They were riding or dying with her on the circle today. Navarrete, 263 on the year. That was the 125th pitch thrown by Kimball. She is going to be exhausted. She is going to sleep well tonight. Strike two, fastball, high heat. And that can take you a long way. Sure can. You get in a 
situation where it's me or nobody. So here we go. Again, we have no idea if anybody might be warming up. Foul away. Navarrete stays alive. No idea if Portland State might have anybody in the bullpen. Yeah, we think the only other option on the bullpen would be Elicity Frost. I saw her warming up a little bit pre game. Uh, like Mark said, we don't have an angle of the bullpen, so we can't Yeah, we can't, we can't really tell. This has been another good one, though, folks. Off the plate, wanted it, did not get it. That was a terrific take right there by the freshman. Senior approach at the plate. One ball, two strikes. Six, nine, and three for Portland State. Five, eight, and two for ISU. Upstairs, two and two. She almost, Navarrete, almost pulled the trigger. So Here now it's two and two. And you get back to the top of the order, regardless as to what happens with Navarrete. Gracie Smith on deck, Alyssa Yee in the hole. And that hit her. That hit her. Well, the Ontario, Oregon native played on for Ontario High School about a year ago around this time, and that's Ontario tough right there. Yep, with two strikes, Kimball hit her with a pitch. Boy, you keep playing with fire, and again, we keep saying it sooner or later. The law of averages says you're going to get burned. This is almost deja vu of Gracie Kimball starting at Super State. She hit the first batter in the top of the seventh. The next Weber State batter sent one over the fence to give Weber State the one-run lead in the seventh inning. Gracie Smith 0 for 2. She's walked twice and stole a base. Bunt on, fouled off. Strike one. coaching question for Andrew Rich will have all year is this decision. Do you let your best hitter swing the bat or do you let her get out sacrifice ball? Infield tight in the corners. Close. Throw down the second. Safe. Stolen base. What a call for Andrew Rich to call that stolen base. That was gutsy right there. First stolen base of the year for Navarrete. So now... Do you keep the bunt on and try to get Navarrete to third base, or do you let Smith swing away? I think you have three chances to put one in the outfield. Paige Simpson, who actually pinch ran, I believe has the speed to score an any ball in the outfield. I'd let all three swing. So that's Paige Simpson out there? It is. Okay, thank you. Ground ball, second base. She did her job. She got the runner over to third. A great piece of hitting by Smith. Grounded out, pulled it to the second baseman. So now, here comes Alyssa Yee, struck out in the first, two RBI single in the second, single in the fourth, reached base on an error in the sixth, took a home run away from Portland State, and had a ball bounce off her glove for a home run. She has run the gamut. The infield is in everywhere. Fouled off, swinging on the first pitch. Outfield straight away, not that deep. But on a base hit, I cannot see a play at the plate. Wow. I think even on the ground ball in the infield, he might be a little aggressive here. And if ISU ties it now, you get into a question, will they play in eighth inning tonight? With the shadows now coming across the field. Ground ball, third base, cuts it off, looks to the runner, throws to first. In time, two outs. Good pitch, jammed ye, hit it right to the third baseman. So it's down to Robison. Grounded out, walked, singled, walked. With Cano on deck, so I don't know if you try and pitch around Robison or not. 
I think the next three batters are all tough outs. We're gonna absolutely, talk about it. yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's just picking your poison. I mean, you could conceivably walk both Robinson and Cano to load the bases, but Brown is no easy out. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, that's tough. You might intentionally walk one, take your chances with Cano, but at the same time, you want to walk both. I'd say because then you put the winning run on second base. So the that's a good point too. Base. That's a good point. Six to five, two outs. Runner on third, it's do or die for Idaho State. They tie the game, they stay alive. If Robinson happens to get one over the fence, they win the game. Piano on deck, she, you know she wants at least one more at bat in her collegiate career here. Robinson with five home runs, 34 RBIs. Again, we come down to that last out, potentially the last strike, which always seems the hardest to get in a game. Unless you happen to be in a blowout situation. So here we go. The infield now back at second and short, even with the bases at first and third. Strike, fastball, outside part of the plate. 